Good evening. Tonight is October 15th, 2018. Welcome to our very first show on Informant Central. Stay tuned. Just 21 days left until midterm elections. And on November 6th, Florida will elect its next governor here in Florida. Uh, what do you have? Last uh, voting time, we had 50% of voters did not vote. Make sure you go vote. Make sure your vote counts. Florida is in crisis. We're five months just into this water crisis. And Hurricane Michael wiped out Mexico Beach. President Trump was there on the scene today along with our governor, Rick Scott. Scott has said for the residents there not to bother to return. Uh, three state of emergencies just over the summer and into fall, Florida, we are in trouble. Our local mainstream media is reporting that the red tide is over, yet we find other news sources that the red tide is, is still there, not going anywhere. Associated Press, Experts say Hurricane Michael failed to end Florida's red tide. That was just at four hours ago. Uh, fall, according to NOAA, NOAA.gov, fall 2018 red tide event affecting Florida and Gulf Coast and Texas. Uh, NOAA weather, check out that on Associated Press, folks. Three state emergencies here in Florida. That's why myself and my partners have come together to form icnews.online to bring you the truth that the other media isn't reporting on, especially here locally. When we have uh, you know, newspapers and, and reporters out there telling us you know, the red tide is going away because we know it affects economy here. And of course, if, if our elected officials aren't going to do anything about it, this becomes a very dire issue uh, for our health and our lifestyle. Um, water samples. Uh, soil samples, you know, the traveling, finding the right labs. There's a lot of labs out there that say that they'll test for uh, the bacteria, for phosphates and things like that, but they're not really doing that. They're, they're more giving you like a, a liver test, and that's not really accurate. Um, we're going to get into this with the blue-green algae and the red tide. We're going to talk about that here later. Uh, so it's very important um, why myself, I've teamed up with another investigator we are licensed by the state of Florida. We actually have an agency here to tell you the truth, to bring you the facts that the other news sources aren't doing. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there doing a lot of good, doing a lot of research, and we want to encourage that. If you want to be um, help us in our quest to find answers to the, you know, the blue-green algae, which is a cyanobacteria, to the red tide and the health effects and the pesticides, please visit icnews.online. Um, my, uh, brings me up to another point. Our daughter, my wife and I, our daughter, Zaria, was just born August 30th with congenital diaphragmatic hernia, which is when the diaphragm you know, has a hole in it and the organs come up to the chest cavity. We're having a fundraiser for her. November 4th, it's a Sunday, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. at Rusty's Raw Bar in Cape Coral. It's right behind Back Streets. You guys come on out, meet the baby. We're gonna have a fundraiser for her. Uh, a good event. They've got volleyball in the back. Um, inside, there's a it, it, it was a former, uh, I think it was like an Elks Lodge or something. So there's a lot of room there, a lot of space. Bring your children, your family, and we'll have a good event Sunday afternoon, November 4th. 
Uh, today, my wife and I, we went to the Broadway Palm Theater so not to watch the theater. Yeah, theater. I'm, I'm sorry, the sir. What was your credential? They were having uh, uh, Harbor Branch, so Ocean Bay, Graphic Harbor Institute, Institute that was doing yeah. a tox and in Harvest. Yeah. So my wife and I, we, we got this the nasal swab. We got the urine test and the blood test uh, to find out there's toxins. This is part of a research study program. Um, it, it's going to be good things to, if they can determine. They're probably a year out of that. I'm also part of a uh, Netflix uh, original that's coming out. It's called State of Denial. They're probably six to eight months out from that as well. Um, we did an interview with uh, NPR, so I don't know when that's going to air, but my wife and I will be on that. Um, you know, the powers to be here in Florida. They were given millions of dollars in grant money uh, for the state of emergency. I know Governor Rick Scott's only released $3 million for seven counties. Um, there's a little over, uh, I think Cape Coral here in uh, Florida got maybe a million dollars. And then Lee County turns around and spends a million dollars in marketing to bring more people here. And all they've really done is, uh, I mean, I know that the city municipals are doing what they can and they brought in pump trucks, uh, things like that. But uh, I think uh, Paradise Marina only got out 60 tons of the blue green algae over the summer, uh, the cyanobacteria, which didn't even put a dent in it. And it, and it really depends on how the wind directs, directs it and everything. And they're kind of in, in a, a closed basin there on the mouth of the river. So that stuff collects in there. And now we've got the red tide problem that uh, a lot of the media is not reporting on except for Associated Press and some of the other news sources. Um, I'm telling you, the cleanup efforts are only masking the, the problem. You know, bacteria is microscopic. It's still there. Um, we talked to some, we had a, an exclusive interview. I'm, I'll probably upload that later if my uh, producer, Chris, decides to do so. Um, we will get some of that footage up there, what they said and how you're, if your immune, your immune system is compromised, you're gonna be more susceptible to, you know, the flesh-eating bacterias and stuff that I was informed today. Some of that does occur naturally in our water system. And a lot of it, it's exacerbated by the water flow from Lake Okeechobee, um, you know, being microscopic. So when they take the algae, and, you know, we have theories on that. We're, we are investigating some concrete evidence um, we're getting with scientists, uh, people out of the University of Miami, um, looking into this on a uh, you know microscopic level, finding out exactly what is going in in our waters. That's why it's important. If you want to be part of our quest to find answers, please visit our website, icnews.online. This is a very personal interest to, to me, particularly. So I'm asking that you trust us with what we're doing. Um, we're not scientists, but we know how to get in contact with a scientist that can get us the answers. If you might be watching this and you're an attorney, please, by all means, contact us. Um, big, big agriculture, big sugar, um, the phosphate mining here. They've been raping our land here for years in development and, and everything that they're doing, the drilling. There's no regulations. There's no fracking regulations here in Florida. And that's one of the goals that I would like to see accomplished. You know, breaking this wide open, finding the cause, finding all the links and putting them together with substantial evidence, getting regulations on that so that we are no longer poisoned. So as Aaron Brockovich uh, told me that, you know, about the cancer clusters up by Hillsborough County, Manatee County, um, just it doesn't take rocket science to figure out where uh, the cancer outbreaks, where the, the CDH outbreaks are at. They're near, you know, phosphate. They're near... Uh, places where there's Roundup. We all heard of this recently. Now, just like you know, these big companies, they have a team of people. And that's why I'm forming a team. As private investigators, we sit in cars for, for hours watching and waiting, following, documenting, and filming. Um, we got to be patient and methodical on this. This is a big deal. It's affecting a lot of people. It's being covered up. We want to, we want this information out. We want this information to become national. Uh, we've already found so much information that most people wouldn't believe how deep this rabbit hole goes and the people that are tied into it. Now, I do want to talk, I mentioned about the, uh, the, B, the BGA, the blue green algae. It's mentioned in Florida Health or the CDC. It's actually a cyanobacteria microsystem. It's not actually algae, as a lot of the mainstream media wants you to believe. Um, 
it sounds less threatening. It, it's a softer sell when they when they refer to it as oh, it's just blue green algae. It's a cyanobacteria. It's toxins that are in this. This is all due from over 70 years of neglect. You know, they, these the mining companies, the development that has come in there, the agriculture, the farmers just dumping the fertilizer, the nitrates, the phosphates, the raw sewage. They're just using the, the river systems that this is flowing down. And as Chris uh, DeZuba, our producer here, he has uh, informed me under a lot of research that, uh, what did you say, Chris? It was a couple of drops. How long ago was that before it reaches? If they were to uh, do a couple of drops of water before it reaches the southern part of uh, Lake Okeechobee? Uh, according to the research um, that other folks have done, scientists, um, geologists, uh, apparently the original flow rate from, you know, way up in the headwaters of the Kissimmee River down to the Everglades, you know, would, would take a, a very long time. It would take, you know, sometimes it, it could take months for it to reach down there. Um, now it can take only a couple of days. Um, so when you get a, you know, heavy rainfall, stuff like that, uh, you know, up around the mines and up around the farmlands and up in these areas, it, it very quickly brings those contaminants down into the lake, but then those contaminants sit in the lake um, and they, they kind of settle to the bottom and contribute to the contamination. So what used to take, you know, weeks or months is now taking days to reach down here. And what a lot of people don't know is that the Everglades, it's not this marshland, this swampland, it's actually a very slow uh, moving river system. So we have all of this stuff, and the Army Corps of Engineers with reversing the flow that, that originally was north and south is now east to west, and it's where they're, they're providing the, the dumping grounds for these uh, toxins. And something's going on recently. The adjuvants that they're using, we're investigating that. They're turning some of the water black. Um, there have been a lot of people that have, have got samples for that. And again, uh, myself and my wife, we have a very personal interest in this. Um, we lived on a sailboat. For most of you that don't know, uh, from last year up until our daughter's birth, we lived on a sailboat up into the ninth month when our daughter Zaria was born. And um, on her seventh month of pregnancy, this is when right around uh, June, we've seen the, uh, the, the blue-green algae coming into the marina. We didn't know what it was. You know, we, we knew there was a red tide bloom coming. We heard some things, again, through, through the media but they weren't telling us what it was. Maybe a lot of people didn't know that, you know, after all of this, there, there was a bloom back in 2016, but this year, 2018 was the worst ever on record. And it just kept coming in, and, you know, a week and another week. And then it looked like it would clear up a little bit. And then we have more and more of this blue green algae coming into the marina nonstop. So as a private investigator, I had all of my social media on private, Instagram, Facebook, everything was private. I, I decided to open it up. I decided to reach out to some of the uh, the media. And, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, but my wife and I, we've been on the front page of newspapers. We've made national news uh, discussing this, just trying to get awareness out. Because again, our goal is for regulations. Our goal is to, to put a stop to this ever happening again. And we keep hearing, because there's no regulations, we keep hearing that the Army Corps of Engineers can, is continuing to dump the water. And we're talking around uh, 1.8 billion gallons of water each day. This is flowing into the Caloosahatchee on the west side. This is flowing out to Stewart, Florida on the, uh, on the east side. And it's going right into our waterways. And, and a lot of people, a lot, a lot of the folks from up north or uh, maybe in another country, Germany or somewhere, they're coming over here not knowing. And they're going up to the beaches and, and they're getting in this water. And, and especially the older people or people that have compromised immune systems they'll start getting sick. Um, I know there was a, a report on a man in Naples who got a flesh-eating uh, bacteria. There was a man on Fort Myers Beach named Zach. Uh, some of the media picked him up where he lost actually a leg. There have been some deaths related to the bacteria that's in the water here in the Gulf Coast of Florida. So this is a very serious thing. And just because season is coming, and you know this, this, uh, this season should be a little skinny. We need our officials to step up and do something about this. There was millions of dollars in grant money. You know, you're going, going back eight to 10 years ago when the, um, the, the retaining uh, areas should have been built, where did all of that money go? This polluted water, if you read some of the headlines um, out of Miami, uh, Orlando newspapers reported on this, 
that uh, some of the toxins are getting into the aquifer system here in Florida. It's a big, big deal. And you and I, we have a voice. If we just can do something about this and take over, take our state back. When you've got people running for governor who already have millions of dollars and they're rallying for a position that, that, that's only paying under a few hundred thousand dollars a year, that's something you might want to look into. Uh, you, you know, now in, in the days of information, the internet, research, research everybody. Uh, there are a lot of good people out there that want to make good positive changes, and it starts with we the people to take our state back. Chris, did you have any uh, closing notes that you want to mention? Uh, no, I think I'm also. Okay. Um, this is our very first episode here on Informant Central. We are going to be bringing you a lot more news, a lot more headlines that are the suppressed news is what we're looking to cover. I'm William Zariski. The website is icnews.online.